Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to Empire's SMP. I hope you're all having a good day. I've been working a little bit more on my city centre here, kind of working on the pathways and everything, dispatching a few pillager patrols as I go, and I've decided that I'm going to dedicate today's episode to becoming the most advanced empire. I see a lot of the other empires worrying about who's the most powerful and who's the weakest, but I am going for something kind of specific. Back at the beginning of this adventure, I did say that I wanted our desert empire to be advanced, and luckily for me, Minecraft has a way of checking how advanced you are through advancements. Now, this is obviously the one for the Vanilla Tweaks data packs we have installed, but as you can see, we're already pretty advanced. I've gotten through all of the basic advancements that you find through Minecraft, thanks to our trip to the end. Even though we haven't technically fought the dragon, we have definitely done a little bit of the late game stuff as far as the regular Minecraft advancements go. But I think there are still a bunch of things in these other advancement tabs that we haven't done. Obviously, there's some like freeing the end and stuff that we can't do quite yet because I believe the other empires are still planning on getting together for a full-on dragon fight as a group so there are a bunch of things in adventuring a few things in the nether that we can do i think we can try and check off as many of these advancements as we can reasonably do and then we can call ourselves the most advanced empire on the server and obviously there are going to be some people saying no you should focus on getting netherite and stuff and believe me that is actually part of this because getting a full suit of netherite armor is one of the advancements not to mention in uh, is it Adventure or Husbandry? The one that has the, yeah, the Netherite Hoe? I definitely want a Netherite Hoe because I'm going to be farming a lot of Azalea leaves for expanding the gardens around here and working on the Hanging Gardens build here as part of the storage room. Still trying to figure out what I want to do with this design. Not entirely certain yet, and I haven't had too much time to work on it elsewhere. So I think we are going to focus on getting all of the supplies and stuff from this, along with some of the newer advancements that have arrived in 1.17, like getting an axolotl to fight some drowned with me, and maybe a few of these ones involving a spyglass looking at a ghast or a parrot. And who knows, if we can sneak into the end, we might be able to get a few of these that we haven't been been able to get already despite the fact that the dragon has to remain alive i like that as a challenge i think we can probably manage that in fact i think i'm going to start with this axolotl achievement just to see what all the fuss is about because obviously there are ocean monuments out here that might potentially be a good place to fight alongside an axolotl but there are also drowned ruins and there will also be naturally spawning drowned around here. Now I've fished up a bunch of tropical fish. I know that the axolotls like to be encouraged to do some stuff using tropical fish, so hopefully as we swim around here we'll be able to make contact with a few drowned and it looks like there are some backup axolotls that we can say hello to if the occasion calls for it. Looks like we've got a drowned right here with a fishing rod and I think I'll need to dive down to a kelp plant to unleash our friend the axolotl and then if i'm holding tropical fish then hopefully he'll be my friend yes there we go he's attacking the drowned let's see if we can team up and win this fight together <laughs> it's the one with the fishing rod seems to be the one that we're dealing with yes there we go oh the healing power of friendship triumphs and our axolotl friend has helped us win a fight. I'd say that was pretty advanced. Pretty advanced thing to do. All right, my little friend has been bucketed back up. I'm gonna fly him home and we're probably going to make a tank for this guy because he is now a champion of Pixandria. I'm also kind of curious about this one, getting in a boat and floating with a goat. I assume we can do this on land. So all I need to do is grab a boat. Yes, I still haven't quite organized all of the storage in here again. Haven't had a huge amount of time to log in this week. I'm also gonna bring this crossbow with me because one one of the other advancements we can get fairly easily from around here is to kill a pillager with a crossbow, giving them a taste of their own medicine. Now, most of the time, this flame bow has been good enough to dispatch an individual pillager, it sets them on fire for long enough that they usually take enough damage that they will die. But now all I need to do is shoot that guy and there we go, we got two for one there, we got old Betsy as well, awesome stuff. Advanced my friends, advanced, look at this crossbowmanship, excellent stuff. We will get the other two crossbow achievements a little bit later, but we got the piercing crossbow, so that's going to work out pretty well for us against some phantoms. On my way out to the mountains, I'm passing over Mythland, and it looks like Mythical Sausage's wheat field has been restored. Not only that, but he has a structure over here that looks like a stables and I think I saw a glimpse 
Yep, looks like he has claimed one of the Ravagers for his own. Although there is a minecart here, so <laughs> I think it is probably safe to say a lawnmower has either escaped, despawned, or been killed. RIP lawnmower, one way or the other. But I think this is probably going to be Bulldozer. If I can, yep, that is Bulldozer, all right. <laughs> Still as feisty as ever. Well, we may have given Mithland a Ravager, but if I know Bulldozer, he's not going to be on anyone's side for very long. But it is here in the mountains above Rivendell, which is Scott Smajer's base. Look at this place, by the way. I love the crest of the horns. That's so cool looking. And <laughs> the stag is looking mightier than ever. I believe around here, we should hopefully be able to find a goat. And I don't see any amongst Scott Smajer's herds of animals. So chances are we will have to look a little further afield. That is a chicken. <laughs> that is not a goat. That does not count. Let us see if we can find a goat in this area. Well, on this mountain, I found several things which are not a goat. There's a llama, a sheep, and a chicken all over there. It seems like maybe the passive mob cap in the area has been taken up by some people's animal farms and I'm not really seeing any goats anywhere. There! There atop the highest mountain in the region we have... Oh! <laughs> and just above Gemini Tay's base, actually. We have a goat, and it looks like a normal goat as well. It's not going to be one of the screaming ones. If it was a screaming one, I would try and capture it and bring it back with me for a prank. But you, sir, you deserve to go in a boat. If I can actually put a boat down. Hello, yes, there we go. It happened all of a sudden, but we are there, floating in boating with goating. <laughs> there it is. And of course, I'm going to let this one free just so it looks like I haven't been around here. But hey, we've we've done the we did the thing. And look at how advanced that was. What an advanced thing for our empire to do. For our next achievement, I'm going to sneak back into Mythland briefly because I know that Mythical Sausage has a parrot somewhere in this house. I can actually hear it. I believe it is going to be upstairs in the, the Lord's bedchambers. Aha! And why did I not get the advancement for that? I'm fairly certain there is. Yep, there we go. <laughs> is it a bird? I guess we had to be looking dead on at the parrot. Well, we don't get an advancement for looking at you, although the guard dogs have taken an interest. I should probably get out of here. And this will be our first night of not sleeping because I need to make sure that phantoms will spawn in the sky so I can get a couple of other things on the advancement list. But we are advanced, my friends. We have made our headway into the spyglass achievements and there is one for looking at a ghast and the ender dragon as well. So maybe we'll get that later in this episode too. In fact, Jimmy's nether portal is right here, so I can probably hop on through from our allies, the Cod Empire, into the nether, and hopefully... Yep, his nether portal has not been badly sabotaged, although... <laughs> It is right over a ravine. And I'm going to see if we can get the return to sender and is it a plane advancements from the same ghast. That seems like a pretty advanced thing to do. It has also just occurred to me that I'm not wearing gold armor. So this could be an ideal opportunity to distract a piglin and prove how advanced we are in the diversionary tactics department. Let's see. Oh, we can grab a little bit of nether gold ore from down here. Grab some gold nuggets from that. And this usually works better on the piglins who are holding swords. So there we go. Distraction. Ha ha. Thank you for participating in this experiment. Now die. I am advanced. Oh, and I advanced myself with a piglin head as well. Ha ha. That's a good look. Advanced. Now this is all also contributing to the monsters hunted advancement for killing one of every hostile monster. So I should be able to take out as many of them as I can while I'm here. And I don't know if I've really fought that many zombie pigmen yet, so that one could be a problem when we get to it. But I haven't really spent that much time in the nether to begin with. We still need to get returned to sender, we still need to enter a bastion remnant and loot a chest. There are still a handful of other things, and we've not really done much with a nether hub yet either. Perhaps the weirdest thing is that I've been flying around for a while now, and I've not seen a single ghast since we have been here. I'm hoping that we'll encounter a soul sand valley sooner or later, because We'll get a higher chance of encountering a ghast there, but it is quite odd to be flying around a nether with no ghasts present at all. I'm hoping I can also rely on a little bit of good luck here by getting some wither skeleton skulls from these wither skeletons. We're not going to be able to fight the wither quite yet, but if I can get one skull, then that is at least another advancement I don't have already. <laughs> Aha! A ghast emerges! And, yep, there we go, we got the advancement. Now all we need to do is return one of these fireballs, with a bow preferably, because I find that so much easier than dealing with the fireballs up close. 
Yes, there we go. We got it. And I only had to be on fire to do it. <laughs> Took a couple more attempts than I expected, but we got there in the end. Look at these advancements, though. Look at them. Now, I'm thinking we may have to return to the Wither Skull fight another time because uh, my shield has just broken and there are a lot of blazes around here. So, yikes. <laughs> but now we have safely returned home. It is nighttime in the desert, at least for the next little while. And that seems like the ideal time to go looking for skeletons to get one of our trickiest advancements here, killing a skeleton from 50 meters away and I don't know if this skeleton over here is going to count or if I need to aim closer to that plains biome and I don't think the skeleton can be killed by flames so I have a feeling I'm going to have to either one shot this or switch bows. Yep that one certainly didn't count. Oh well looks like we'll have to wait for a second night but that's fine because once again that increases the insomnia counter and we get closer to spawning phantoms. While it is still daytime we can work on our archery skills a little bit. Come out here into the copper fields and put down a target block because striking the center of a target block from 30 meters away is one of our advancements and I think 30 meters away should be yeah five or six of these copper blocks away so how about we try from about here of course I can no longer see the target block because all of my arrows were on fire so in retrospect using a flame bow may have been a bad idea but there aren't too many arrows that have missed the block so I think it's safe to say that our target skills are on point it's just that Actually hitting the center of a bullseye is more a matter of luck than a matter of skill. So we're going to do this the easy cheesy way by putting a trapdoor on top of there, running redstone dust all the way across the field, firing a few arrows directly down into the center of this trapdoor, and pulling the lever at the other end from a safe distance. <laughs> there we go. Works every time. One of the keys to being advanced is knowing how to cheese the system. Now, while a lot of these can be accomplished with just one quick action, there are, of course, a couple which need a little bit more consideration, like a balanced diet in which we have to eat everything that's edible, even if it's not good for us. And I happen to have acquired, through a little bit of cheeky potato farming, a poisonous potato. <laughs> so I guess I'm just gonna... Oh! <laughs> that didn't even give me the hunger debuff. Incredible. Sometimes they don't. So poisonous potatoes actually occasionally useful. This one, though, <laughs> is definitely going to come off the worse for me because I need to eat a puffer fish. Unfortunately, I need to get hungry before I can do that. So the potato thing kind of backfired. Luckily, in the meantime, there is some other stuff I can do. I need to grab a pumpkin from here, which is legitimately the first pumpkin I've picked up since the server began. We're going to shear that to turn it into a carved pumpkin. And to help us through this night, we are going to summon our first iron golem to keep away some of the other mobs and maybe become our bone collector. And he seems to be doing a pretty good job from down here. Hopefully he'll damage a couple of these skeletons and then I'll be able to finish them off with some arrows. But alas, the poor lad is going to die eventually because the skeletons are going to keep him at bay for a little bit longer. Is that guy 50 blocks away? I doubt it, but it looks like he has some armor that means he'll survive his first flame arrow. I'm aiming for the ones over the river in the savannah, but I'm honestly not sure where my arrows are landing because no, I think we got one. I think we got one right there. Let's see if we can hit him while he's in the river. My arrows are disappearing before they land when I aim this way, so that's kind of a problem. But if that skeleton stays at a distance, yeah, there we go. And thank goodness for that, because I think my bow is pretty close to breaking. <laughs> Looks like our iron golem may have met a heroic end over here as well. I see a little bit of iron and some poppies lying on the ground. RIP, but at least we got the advancement for it. And that has at least worked up my appetite for a puffer fish. <laughs> Because, wow, <laughs> these things do a lot of damage. They give you nausea, they give you poison, and they give you hunger all at the same time, and all for quite a duration. We have poison too for the next minute. So hopefully the pumpkin pie will be enough to regenerate my health, but if not, I'll have to brew up some regen potions with the ghast here we got earlier. But I can use all of the hunger that generated to work towards some of the other things we need to add to our balanced diet. Mostly, I think, raw fish and some of the stuff that you don't bother eating raw because you know it's going to be better cooked. We have a couple of pretty important ones in here as well, of course. I haven't eaten a golden apple yet. An enchanted golden apple needs to be eaten for that advice advancement to complete, so I think we'll probably save the best for last. Fortunately for me, a few of these are desert specialties, because if we get hold of some rabbit, which right now I'm having really bad luck with, that is three items. That is rabbit stew, raw rabbit, and cooked rabbit. And after getting virtually nothing from rabbits for the first little while, I hit one with a looting sword, and it gave me three raw rabbit in one go. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Just gonna casually eat one of those on the way back to the house. Eat myself some cooked rabbit for one more, and then completely ignore the crafting recipe for rabbit stew, because it's one of the first trades you can get from a butcher. <laughs> 
For now, I think I'll return to the nether, because once we're here, we have a couple of other things I really need to take care of. First of all, grabbing a handful of glowstone so that we can use it to craft and charge a respawn anchor. There we go, fully charged and not quite nine lives, but I don't want to set my spawn point here, so I guess we're just going to leave it there as a red herring. Next up, I think it's time to either go looking for more wither skeletons, go find a bastion, or get myself a full suit of netherite armor and a couple of other ingots for country load take me home and serious dedication i think we're gonna go looking for a bastion first i've got to say the nether in this world is kind of awesome in that i actually haven't found a bastion yet normally you find tons of them before you even see a nether fortress but this one seems to have way more than its fair share of nether fortresses <laughs> Which is great because we just got ourselves the spooky scary skeleton advancement right there and then. <laughs> that is skull number two almost immediately afterwards and we are one skull away from being able to fight the wither in this episode. Which I wasn't expecting to be able to do in this episode but you know if the game's going to keep throwing skulls at me I might as well. But I don't want to get too distracted from the task at hand I am still trying to locate a bastion and sooner or later we should bump into one traversing the nether here. And I eventually decided to return to the overworld to repair my bow and I'd come back to search the lava lakes via strider. Unfortunately the striders around here seem more keen on doing stunts than being ridden so I might have to look a little further afield for my strider for the day. Here we go looks like this one's interested. Hello fella how would you like to be the horse for the day? There we go. All right let's go and see if we can find a bastion. Well it's been a long time coming but I eventually found what I was looking for. We've got a bastion right here and while it looks like this one has already been raided sadly it seems like whoever's been here has been pretty thorough and they've already swept all the chests out of this place including <laughs> surrounding the entire thing with netherrack to make sure that they were undisturbed while they did so and I can't even place a chest of my own in here because that doesn't really count as a bastion loot chest believe me I have tried so <laughs> I think it's probably worth finding a bastion of our own after all luckily for me it seems like we're on a roll and I do see a couple of piglin brutes in this one so it looks like this bastion at least is undiscovered and it looks like the loot chest in this structure have been largely undisturbed as well so I'm going to take out a couple of these piglins from above so that they don't bother me while I open the rest of these chests and I don't know if you find them as loot in every bastion but I'm hoping that we run across a lodestone in here we're certainly going to get our fair share of golden carrots and I might as well take some of the rarer blocks like the gilded blackstone as well oh and I'm breaking two diamond pickaxe as well don't mind if I do a couple of golden boots that might keep the rest of the piglins off me I'm going to see if there's anything netherite related in here and if not we can probably just call it good there i hear a piglin brute being mad at us and it turns out he's just stuck down here in a hole which is fine by me because i'm happy taking him out from a distance and then grabbing whatever's in this chest oh a diamond shovel and i guess some chains too i don't mind having those there's a couple of chests that i can snag from a high angle a bunch more gilded blackstone and i'm keeping an eye out for more piglin brutes around here i've got my fireworks on me just in case but all i should need to do is grab this we got a pig step in there as well fantastic Fantastic. I think that's good for now. We should be able to head on home. Advanced! Advanced Bastion raiding! Oh! And <laughs> of course I look back in to find <laughs> Mithland soldiers on my doorstep. Well, uh, looks like we're just gonna have to take care of some of these and I wonder if one of those will have a crossbow that I can use. <laughs> there was one hiding behind the bookshelf. Uh, <laughs> hello? Are there some on the roof as well? <laughs> or are they just outside? <laughs> Oh, they are circling the house. <laughs> There's actually a whole bunch of them out here. That's really great. Do they all have name tags? Mithlin Soldier NPC. <laughs> I like this. Someone tell Mythical Sausage that all his NPCs are going down in one hit, though. I feel like he's actually kind of softened them up for me a little bit here. Yep, <laughs> even the pillager captain just got shot down by one of his teammates. That is, that is rough. <laughs> oh, they're in all my houses, too. There's some here in the storage room. They are... They are all so easy to take down, though. Look at this. They've clearly been shooting each other as he's tried to get them in here. Either that or he splashed them all with poison. Thankfully, there's none. Oh, wait, there's, there is one. <laughs> there's one here in the candle shop. Can't believe he was waiting for me behind the door. <laughs> the assassin. That's what this is. This is an assassination attempt by Mithland, I feel like. Are there any in the forge as well? No, nah, looks like he didn't uh, manage to secure any in the foundry. And I wonder if there's a couple of rabbits in here. Um, I'm fairly certain these aren't spies from Mithland, although you never know. We probably better dispatch them just in case. Oh, it looks like they weren't spies after all, but we got a <laughs> we got a rabbit head. <laughs> Look at this, folks. We ended up getting a rabbit head. That's 
Oh, that's so sad. I think we need to decorate a new shield. I think we need to get a shield. I mean, I think we do have... Yes, we have the mod on this that actually rescales shield textures to make them actually look good, which I think is great. Well, I dropped off some of the most powerful creatures from a raid on Mythical Sausage's doorstep, and he responded with a bunch of pillagers on one HP each. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's message received, all right. You can't kill me, Mythical Sausage. I'm too advanced. <laughs> And look at these lads. I've just noticed a ton of them are stuck in the corner. <laughs> Mythical Sausage sends his thickest henchmen to deal with me, I swear. Honestly, three of those guys died before I even swung a sword at them. <laughs> what legends. At this point, I figure the next stage in my advancement is just to get hold of a whole bunch of netherites. So I'm back in my element. I'm back down here in the nether, getting ready to mine some ancient debris. We're at Y15. I've got 37 TNT, which is not much, but it'll do for the time being. And we're just going to go mining basically straight west, so into my territory as far as the overworld is concerned, and we'll see how much debris we can come away with. For a full suit of armor plus a lodestone and a netherite ho, we are going to have to get hold of 24, which doesn't sound like much, but as far as ancient debris is concerned is quite a lot. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the other side. And so I emerge from my netherite mining outpost to find that the strider is waiting for me and we can head on home with 24 ancient debris nestled in my inventory. Well, I'm glad to have it because now we can finally upgrade everything to netherite, including a hoe and a brand new lodestone. Time to put the blast furnaces to use. So I'll chuck eight in there, eight in there, and eight in there. We need to get a little bit more gold, but I have plenty in reserve. And now we are going to be working with full netherite. And I mean, obviously, it'd be nice to get netherite on some of the other tools as well. I'm kind of missing it on the sword, the axe, and the shovel. But I'll settle for what we've got going on right here because we are just about to upgrade the helmet, the leggings, the chest plate, and the boots for a full set. <laughs> That's right. A full set of netherite armor are all ready to do this as well. Country load, take me home, and one more for the road. Serious dedication. Oh, yes. And I had to do this when there were five other people online so they could see how advanced I am. I'm so advanced! I think for the sake of this lodestone always guiding me back to my purpose, I'm actually going to put it here underneath the vigil. So we're going to have a lodestone compass attuned to it, constantly pointing towards the vigil, reminding me that I need to come back and check on this thing, because apparently... <laughs> Apparently Joel has died like 55 times. I'm gonna need to craft more candles. I have a feeling we're going to rescue a ghast from the nether, bring it safely home to the overworld, and then kill it another time, because I have a feeling I might want to bring some more ghasts from the nether. And I've just asked if we can not skip the night so I can get the phantom achievement, and everybody seemed cool with that. <laughs> so I think we should be all good, and then from there, we might go and find another wither skeleton skull, or I might go to the end. But there's a couple of these that I really want to check off the list today. But hopefully the phantoms spawn quickly, because I really don't like hanging out around here at night, and the husks don't despawn when the day comes, so I'm gonna try and get these phantoms as quickly as possible, as long as they will spawn in the first place. Yes, okay, we have one, we have one in the boat, okay, that is one of two, and I think we're gonna get that down to this sort of height, and hopefully we should get another phantom or two spawning during the night here. Oh, uh, it looks like they both got into the same boat. That is incredible. Okay, well, I can get a block over these guys. And now I sincerely hope that I didn't damage either of these phantoms because I now have to shoot them both at the same time. And hopefully <laughs> they're going to be taking the same amount of damage while I do this. If one of them dies before the other one, no, <laughs> we didn't get to do it. That sucks. Well, I think we'll have to attempt the phantom trap later when there are slightly fewer people to bother on the server with not skipping the night. But to be honest, I think this is going to work out okay as long as I get two perfectly healthy phantoms in the process. Okay, back from the nether fortress with one more wither skeleton skull. It's time to fight our first wither of the season. I'm really looking forward to this. And I honestly don't know where I should fight it. Mythical Sausage isn't logged in. Should we do it under his base? So here we are back at the ravine underneath Mythland. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. This is a completely unrelated ravine. We're going to hop down here, probably dig along the base of this ravine here, and I think we're going to fight the wither in a long cave tunnel. 
Well, it turns out I'm so advanced, I got a bit ahead of myself there, and I forgot to bring the soul sand with me, so I had to go back and get it, but that also let me go and pick up my netherite chest plate and get a couple of other things as well, so that's a little bit better, and it looks like, yep, we are... <laughs> We are underneath some sort of lava lake here, unfortunately. So maybe now we're down here, we'll dig in the opposite direction and see if that produces any better results. There are plenty of ores around here, and I always like fighting the wither at Y11, just in case it uncovers some diamond ore in the process. I also don't know how tough the wither is when it comes to breaking out of deep slate, so potentially deep slate could be a better trap for the wither in future. Okay, and with our two sacrificial chickens nearby, I'm going to let the rest of the server know that there are scary noises incoming. And I'm going to chuck out any last junk items that I have on me. Let's throw the tuff down there as well, and let's do it! Let's fight the wither, heck yes! Now this fight usually goes pretty easy. I've got a power 5 bow. We don't have a smite sword, but I've got sharpness, so... This really shouldn't be a problem unless the wither gets out into some caves. But that's it already in sword mode, so all I should have to do is get up nice and close, give it a couple of quick taps, and it should go down nice and easily. There we go, it's not even touching me at this point. A damage-free wither fight would be absolutely perfect. Yes! <laughs> there it goes. The most advanced wither fight you have ever seen, my friends. <laughs> All done, and without needing to use any of the potions, we have our first nether star. It's a good thing too, because all I brought with me was a fire resist potion and a swiftness potion in case things went badly wrong. But we have an armored wither's head as well, that's fantastic. And... Oh! <laughs> the wither managed to avoid destroying some emerald ore. I had no idea we were under a mountain's biome, but that... That is icing on the cake, my friends. Now, there are some advancements that I will get, but are honestly kind of a pain to do at short notice, like getting all of the different variants of cats, breeding all the possible animals, and I do think we're going to have to leave a balanced diet until I can make a proper spreadsheet for it or something, but to round off today's episode, I am going to go back to the end, because there are a few things that I can get here before we do our dragon fight. I'm going to make sure my ender chest is a little more empty than this right now. I'm going to dump out all of my stuff into a handy shulker box and probably tuck that back in the ender chest for safekeeping. It's time we got a little bit organized with some of this stuff after all, and then I think we're going to return to the stronghold portal, make our way to the end, and see if we can get these last few end advancements. There we go, that's all looking a little cleaner. I've got my treasure box in there, I'm going to put an extra shulker box in there, we're going to grab a few glass bottles for the dragon's breath, and I think that should be all we need to head back to the stronghold. Well, it looks like somebody has made a portal inside of the Ocean Queen's secret grotto, but hopefully I'll be able to make my way through to the portal room from here. Here we are, past the library, into the portal room, and <laughs> it feels like a while since I've been back here, but we're going to the end, and we're very briefly going to say hi to the dragon herself. We'll be back for you a little bit later, armed with Elytra and everything, but as long as I can get it to shoot some of that wonderful dragon's breath at me, I should be able to snaffle up some of it in a glass bottle and make my way out to the end islands. Yep, there we go, there is Dragon's Breath number one, and there we go. That's gonna confuse the heck out of everybody. <laughs> Now, once again, I'm not at all worried about End City loot while I'm out here. I'm not looking for a spare set of Elytra or Shulker boxes, although those would, of course, be nice. But if we encounter a city that's been raided, all that matters is that one Shulker remains, because we've just got to levitate up high enough and then displace ourselves with an Ender Pearl, and we should hopefully get that advancement. Well, here we go. There is an End City ship, and by the look of things, it still has a dragon head on the prow and some Shulkers nearby, which means... Yes, we have our backup set of Elytra, ladies and gents. That's a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. I will absolutely take a backup set. Oh, and some diamonds in here as well. Very, very nice. It's even a set of Frostwalker boots if I feel like flaunting the Ocean Queen's domain by walking on water. Excellent stuff. And we got another Shulker head, even though we only got one Shulker shell from that, which with looting seems a little bit stingy to me, but we'll see how we get on in the rest of the city. Although, to be quite honest, here seems like as good a place as any to do it. It's one of the highest points in the end city that we can possibly get to, and the Shulker will be able to hit us a couple of times, hopefully, if he's a decent shot, before the levitation effect wears off. Yes, there we go. Let's see how high up we can get before we say adieu to this end city and return to the ground. 
Well, it looks like we're above the rest of the city now, so all I should need to do is aim for a decent sized crater and hopefully, fingers crossed, yes, there we go. We got it. Great view from up here, and that's one of the last advancements we'll be able to get. Well, after raiding this end city down to the beetroot seeds, I think it's time to go. But first, before we leap into the void, of course, we have to find that end gateway that's going to get us the return advancement. I think I will probably end up throwing all of my stuff into the ender chest first and then ender pearling back to the central island so I don't have to panic when faced with the dragon. I honestly think actually being killed by the dragon would be a pretty cool way to leave the end and it might just bamboozle everybody else on the server for a minute or two here. I'm basically out of food so I'm just going to coast around, see if I can find myself an end gateway, eat a couple of chorus fruit if I need to and hopefully we'll be able to return home soon. There we go, that beacon is unmistakable. We have a pretty accessible end return gateway actually. This is perfect, right. So all we're gonna do is pop down the ender chest. I'm gonna take all my armor and elytra off my shield. My poor battered shield is almost done, but that's fine. We can throw everything that we wanted to keep in here. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to fit most everything in here if we want to. There's little bits of stuff that might have to get left behind like the magenta glass and the purple blocks. I'm keeping this Bane of Arthropod sword for some reason as well, apparently, but we will keep the ender pearls on us actually so let's sneak in the purple blocks too and the last thing we're going to do is make our way back to that central island we'll leave this ender chest out here i suppose just double check that i've got nothing else on me that i couldn't bear to leave and we're gonna head back to the central island where the dragon awaits now i figure it'd be kind of fun just to jump up and down until the dragon sees me and maybe we'll end up getting killed by the dragon to close out this episode Wonder if I can end a pearl into the dragon from here, but nope, looks like it is coming down to nest. And from there, we'll be able to get yeeted into the void by it if we so much as touch one of the wings. Here we go, let's end a pearl into the dragon while it's on the portal and see what this does. Yep, <laughs> hey, we're away and, oh, it looks like an endermite ended up getting spawned and I left one of those behind. Oh, well, let's see if we can coax the dragon into flying towards me when it leaves the portal. Just got to stand over here in the flight path, look death at straight in the face and say, hello, we're going to be back for you real soon. Here she comes, here she comes, and there it is! <laughs> hey, we got killed by the Ender Dragon. Well, that is one candle I'm looking forward to adding to the vigil. The Ocean Queen calls it a respectable death. I call it a resounding victory. I'm pretty sure with all of that accomplished in today's episode, we have to be the most advanced civilization on the map right now. We've got to be the most advanced empire with only a few advancements really left to claim. And some of these honestly looking pretty achievable. I really wish I'd thought to pull out my spyglass, but I think we're all going to do that when we go and fight the dragon. And there's a couple of other things here and there, bits and pieces that we might need a little bit of help with. But folks, that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of Empire's SMP. I hope you've enjoyed watching our civilization advance. And <laughs> Let me know what your favorite advancement was in the comments section. Don't forget to leave a like on this video for me if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.